I want to begin tonight by doing the reading from the language of letting go. And I picked a reading from September 22nd. Kind of fits into our topic for tonight. Trusting ourselves. Many of us believe that heeding the word of God or a higher power meant following rigid rules and instruction booklet for life. Many of us now believe differently. The rigid rules, the endless instructions, the exhortation to perfection are not the words a higher power whispers. The words of God are often those still small words we call intuition or instinct, leading and guiding us forward. We are free to be who we are, to listen to and trust ourselves. We are free to listen to the gentle, loving words of a higher power, words whispered to us and through each of us. They help me, God, to let go of shame-based rigid rules. I will choose the freedom of loving, listening, and trusting. I wanted to read that because tonight we're going to concentrate on family systems. And also, I kind of have a nickname for this lecture. I call it, What is Normal? Yes, Virginia, there is a normal. But the bottom line is, I shared this last week, and I just want to emphasize it again. If you go back and you look at and you actually look at the first 10 years of your life. That's where all your basic foundations and things are set. I mentioned the five families last week that we enter into at birth. You know, without we have no choice, we have to. Our, our normal blood family, our neighborhood cultural environment family, you know, our religious family, peer family, and society family. And all of us experience this as we go through this process in life. But I've learned that if I truly get in touch with those first 10 years, I will understand my traits, my characteristics, why I act the way I act, why I function the way I function, because I picked up my traits, my characteristics, my way of life, my little idiosyncrasies, different types of things, and then becomes a normal. And so as a result then, I've learned over the years that I can actually create new normals Normals that literally I can work on in the course of my journey in life. See, we're allowed to make changes. So what I'd like to, you to try to do tonight is give you some ideas on how to do an inventory of the first 10 years of your life and take a look at how these things interconnected with you. And I'll give you some examples to show you what I mean in the process. Of course, the only person I can talk about is myself, but I go back and look at my inventory. Because again, the first 10 years of my life were from 1940 to 1950. The first 10 years of my granddaughter Jordan's life were from 1998 to 2008. Now, do you think maybe we got different messages? Yeah, I think so. It's totally amazing. But the bottom line is those messages are connected to each and every one of us based on the years we've grown up in the course of our journey. Give you an example. In my family system in growing up, we had all kinds of rules. I lived in Camden, New Jersey, and my blood family, my parents, you know, as I mentioned before, came from Italy. They were you know, part of an arranged marriage and I'm the only child. And basically growing up in Camden back in the forties, literally everything was divided. You had the Italian Catholic Church, the Irish Catholic Church, the Jewish synagogue, the Polish Catholic Church. We had the African-American Catholic Church. We had the Spanish Catholic Church. We had the German Catholic Church. We had more Catholic churches and only one synagogue, but plenty of Catholic churches. But basically the rules were, here's those rules. Everything was rigid. You're not allowed to go to any church except the Italian Catholic Church. I think if I went into the Irish Catholic Church, I think I was committing to sin. It was totally amazing. But it's amazing how these things are drilled into you because people are operating on fear. And codependency thrives on fear and control. We try to control everything and we live in fear. Then we're scared to make changes and look at things differently in the course of our life. My mom, I picked up from my mom, my addictive personality. I love my mom. I'm grateful she gave it to me. 
My mom had her own addiction problems. She also was a compulsive overreader. I picked up a lot of my traits and characteristics from her. I also picked up my codependency traits from my dad. Mr. Wonderful, Mr. Fantastic, we did everything for everybody. We never had a life of his own. And I became my father. I became the connection of both of them together. So traits and characteristics, but also the rules that went along with it. Growing up in the early 40s, you know, basically, my mother had a lot of rules. My mother kind of oversmothered me and overprotected me. So one of the rules we all remember, many of us probably remember this one, don't go anywhere unless you have clean underwear. Because God forbid you have an accident. You might be dead, but at least your underwear will be clean. I won't be embarrassed. So it's crazy. We look at these things and we laugh about them today, but they were serious about this stuff back then. The other one is, I learned this from my mom, if God wanted you to fly, God would have given you wings. Stay out of airplanes. They're no good. I didn't learn to fly. I, I didn't even get flying an airplane until I was 48 years old. But I was scared. I carried that all the way through my life. When I finally got married, my wife walked me down the gangplank. With a guy called so a gangplank. That chap get a thing you go through to get on the plane. And I could swear my mother would be standing there waiting for me. Still scared half to death. It's amazing how these things play in your head, the guilt, the fear, these types of things. They're all part of it. I, I know now that I was trained in guilt, fear, and worry. It was all part of it. The other one was, you know, my mother used to do this to me. Never ride a bicycle because you might get hurt. Don't breathe, you might get hurt. Don't do anything, you might get hurt. I learned to ride a bicycle when I was 51 years old. That was a sight for sore eyes. My friend, who was the chief of police in Williamstown, my neighbor, he actually, he's 50, he was 56, I was 51. Now visualize him running down the street behind me, holding the seat of the bike so I can get started. Two, two adults. I never learned how to ride. So I finally learned how to ride. I love to ride. But it's, a great, it's crazy, some of the stuff that we do. But I look at these things and we learn so many different ways of life. But they kind of become our normal. Pick up our prejudices. We pick up the attitudes, things of this effect, how we look at life. And again, I realized a lot of positive came from it too, because I realized over and over again, as I work on myself today, I'm learning from my history, from my past. Believe it or not, I'm grateful to my mom for my addictive personality today. It gave me the gift of recovery. It gave me the gift of all of you. It's fantastic. My dad, I had to learn to set some boundaries. I had to learn that magic word, which was scary as hell. In the English language, I think Pat will tell you the word is there. This word is called no. I'm still a little nervous when I say it. The bottom line is I'm finally learning how to say that. Boundaries, how to set boundaries. You know, we also grew up in neighborhoods, cultural and environment family. We learned from different things in different directions. And so literally, we literally had to live through these concepts, these guidelines. So your neighborhood, your culture, your environment. I grew up in the 40s, and we didn't have a TV when I grew up. Everything was radio. Radio was the centralized of everything. I mean, listen to the World Series, because even back then, all baseball games were played in daylight. There were no lights. The world was different back then. Even the Philly, you know, the Philadelphia Athletics, Connie Mack. He coached the A's, you know, with a suit and tie on. You know, who does that in 100 degree weather? That's amazing. The bottom line was, was all part of it. So things change as life goes on. It's part of it. But growing up in the Italian environment, you know, and growing up around that, that area, you, you learn different traits, different characteristics. You even learn different vocabulary. Now, I still call it a birthday party. Everybody says, you don't say it right. I, I was actually in Montana and I was having a cup of coffee at a restaurant. And the girl came up to me and she said, you're not from here, are you? I said, no, you're either New York or Philadelphia. I said, what do you mean? I can tell by the way you talk. It was totally amazing. But again, you pick up these traits, these characteristics, you didn't even realize you're doing it. 
Your neighborhood gives them to you, different things in different directions. You also learn the rules. For example, in my neighborhood of South Camden back in the 40s, you know, God forbid you ever date anybody unless they're Italian. My cousin had the audacity to date an Irish girl. And then later on, he married her. My aunt cut him off from the family. That's it. He doesn't exist anymore. My son died. Took two years to finally, finally get them reconnected and back together again. Some of the scary things, the things we're connected with. See, it's because we get so rigid. We get uptight. All the fears and things that come into play, and then the control issues that go along with it. This is all a major part of codependency. We pick them up, we pick up traits, we pick up characteristics. It's all part of it. So we have all these rules, these concepts. What I realize is today, we can open that door up. Even when it comes to the priesthood, I realize this today. If I had left the priesthood back in the 40s, if I was too young, by the way, but if anybody that was a priest, left the priest, so they have to move to California. They'd be ostracized, but things change again. The world has this constant process of always being changing, things keep changing. And yet, so many times, what do we try to do? We try to keep it where it is. We're afraid of change, we're afraid to move on. We pick up different things from our neighborhood, from our cultural, from our background. You know, I still joke about this today, but you know, I look at my mother's side of the family and. My mother's side, you know, they were a little colorful. What can I tell you? You know, I always joke. I say, my, 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 mother, my mother's maiden name was Capone. So that kind of gives you an idea that can have, they're part of the family. But my, you know, in my house, they ran numbers. They did horse races. They did all that kind of stuff. When I was a kid, I was eight years old, Billy. I was told to go to the grocery store and pick up the groceries. I didn't know it. My uncle gave me a nickel to go to the grocery store. A nickel was a lot of money. I like that. But the groceries, the groceries were on top and the number slips were on the bottom. I was actually running, running number slips. And even though I was doing it eight years old, it was totally amazing. But see, I can look back on that today and I really, I mean, my mom was a bookie. My mom booked numbers, you know, all that kind of stuff. And it was almost like my father's side, the family, he was Mr. Wonderful, Mr. Perfect. Everybody loved him did everything everybody wanted, cooked for everybody, took care of everybody. Good God, what a dichotomy. Even in my family, I must have had, I don't know, I, our house was Grand Central Station. I had people in and out of my I don't know who they were. They would say to my father, who's that? That's your guma. Who's that? That's your guma. Who's that? I always gumas and gumas. I don't know who they were. It wasn't important. Of course, little kids, should be seen and not heard, quiet. Everything was held in, everything was held back. It was a scary concept you come right down to. But these are traits, these are characteristics. Even when it came to religion, you know, we were taught a religion of fear, a religion of guilt. I was always scared to death of God. God had this big book, he's up there watching me. If I did something wrong, boom, I got you. But I learned that from my patterns. But again, look at normal. When I was a kid, I went to an Italian Catholic grammar school. The nuns in grammar school back then were actually DI sergeants for the Marine Corps, but they were very interesting teachers. You know, you know, Pat, that was crazy back then. Because literally, you know, they walk them down the aisle, smack you on the head, hit you with pointers. Oh my God, I still got pain from them. Still remember Sister Drusilla, she, she, she was rough, man. And then Sister Galdan, she used to yank hair out of your head. Now you wonder why I'm like this all the time. She hear yank out of your head and I hold it in front of you and smile at you. But again, that was normal. Today, they'd be arrested for child abuse. Be totally different today. See how normals change over the years? I went home and told my parents that sister hit me. Guess what? I get hit again. So I didn't have long to say nothing. But the concept was, it was a whole different world. Even growing up, you know, we had the first TV in our house when I was eight years old, 1948. We're excited. The TV was about as wide as this desk I've got here. 
had about 25 tubes in it. We had a man in Camden called the Tube Man. They kept burning out. He had to come around and change them all the time. We had a seven inch screen, black and white, and one channel. One channel. It came on six o'clock at night, went off at nine o'clock at night. We had the same shows every night. The newsreel from six to 6.30, Howdy Doody with Clara Bell, the puppet show at, at, at 6.30 to seven. Then Frontier Playhouse, a cowboy show. Eight o'clock, we had variety show with the Caesar and Virginia Coca, Jimmy Durante, Ed Sullivan. You know, nine o'clock, they play the Star Spangled Banner. And then you get a test pattern for the rest of the night, come back the next day and try again. But again, things move from there. Now we've got a TV watch. Pretty soon you'll have one implanted inside of you so you can watch it all day long. Now we have it on our cell phone. We can watch movies, do all kinds of things. It's amazing how things change over the years. It's interesting going through that process of change. But the beautiful thing about it is you got to be open to it. If you have an open mind, this can be exciting to watch the transition, to watch the change. But again, rules and regulations are things that we learn. Today, I have a God of love, a God of simplicity, a beautiful God in my life. Things have changed over the years. And we have the power deep down inside that change can take place every day in the course of our journey. Things are always in process. They're always learning. We're always growing. We can't go back, even though I know the guys at the gym in the morning, they keep wanting to go back to 1940, 19, in the 1950s, and they want to go back. They, the police can we please go back. I said, I don't want to go back. I want to stay where I am. I want to move forward. But again, it's that concept of nostalgia. It's okay to talk about it, to look back on it, but to be able to laugh about it, to learn from it, to grow from it. It's all part of traits and characteristics. Your peer family. Growing up as a kid, I tell you, my peer family was a tough, tough family. And many of us realized the fact that our children are tough on kids. When I was a small boy, you know, I was a little bit heavy. And, you know, my mom, had this little pattern, you know, and she used to, you know, what can I tell you? She, when I went out to play, she would go out with me and tell the other kids not to hurt me. And that really did wonders for your ego. It's amazing. So I had nicknames, what can I tell you? You know, mama's boy, church mouths, little piggy, all kinds of wonderful, fantastic names. The kids were tough, but again, the shame, the guilt, the stuff that goes along with that. As a result, even on my body, when I was a little boy, I was heavy. So my breasts were a little bit big. So the kids would play games with me. They grabbed them. They could do different types of crazy things and create all kinds of body images for me. And I guess that's one of the reasons why I'm in an eating disorder recovery program today is I still have a lot of body images. It's amazing. My wife will tell you, even when I go to the beach, I keep my t-shirt on longer than anybody else does. I still have a lot of fear, a lot of shame that goes along with that. I'm better at it today. I'm working on it. But it's amazing how these things do affect you. They affect the corner of your life. You take these things with you. They're traits, they're characteristics. The same thing as regards society. Like I mentioned earlier, society I grew up in, we didn't get bombarded with a lot of messages. But think about it today. Your grandkids, my grandkids, all of us, even in our life today, we're getting bombarded by social media, the internet, all these different social platforms, all these messages, everything else. We're bombarded with messages. So kids growing up today are bombarded tremendously. It's amazing how much my grandkids know. Actually scares me a little bit. I have a problem with my cell phone. I just call my granddaughter. Boom, 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 she fixes it. I don't need a repairman anymore, I got her. It's totally amazing, you come right down to it. They know things I would never know. Look at the transition, look what we're doing right here on Zoom. You know, I remember when the first time I was introduced to Zoom, it scared the hell out of me. And yet at the same time, today I'm meeting people all over the country. I'm meeting people in different parts of the country, even in my recovery support groups. You know, I have people in my recovery groups that come from Nebraska, they come from Texas, 
They come from California. They come from all different parts of the country. It's amazing. We even have a lady in our group who's been with our group for two and a half years now from Great Britain. She's there every week. It's totally amazing. And my sponsor lives in California. So I actually meet with my sponsor once a week, but we do it on Zoom. I'm not flying to California, but we do it on Zoom. So the concept is I'm learning how to use things, to use them properly, to use them in a positive way. And that's the key. Can I take the things of life, look at my history, embrace it? Because your history is your most powerful teacher. All the different areas of your life, your history, your growing up process, they're all parts of your traits. They'll be part of you until 20 years after you're dead. Okay? I have to understand that. You got that bill 20 years after you're dead. They're part of you. There are traits. There are characteristics. Instead of me fighting them and battling them and denying them, I have to learn to embrace them. This is part of who I am. My history is mine. And I know when I did my, my childhood history inventory, you know, I got a lot more I could tell you about. But the bottom line is, this is all these happen for a purpose. What lessons can I learn from them? How can I grow from them? Even attitudes in life, how to deal with life, how to handle life. Things were so much different back then. You know, I, was, I always tell the story. I love telling it because it kind of baffled me a little bit, but. I was home from the seminary one summer. I was around 20 years old. And my mom, you know, getting ready to do grocery shopping. And so we had a, we had Salvatore who lived across the street. So she had to go, you know, get the, he was in a wheelchair. She would go over and get his grocery list and she'd do her shopping and his shopping. So she went shopping. She came home. She put the groceries away. And I just said to her, how's Salvatore? She said, he's dead. I said, what, my? He's dead. I went over to his grocery list and he was dead. Did you call the family? Not yet. I'm going to get my shopping done first. I had to go on my groceries put away first. So I looked at her with amazement. You didn't call her. She said, Vince. She said, he'll be just as dead an hour from now as he is now. Don't worry about it. And now I'll call the family. She wanted to be there for all the excitement. That's why. But amazing. But they looked at life so differently than we look at it. And I know now, I'm beginning to understand. I'm learning to get connected. And all these people that were part of my history, part of your history, they're all our teachers. They're the people we learn from. And as codependents, we have to learn, don't live in fear. Because fear will tear you down or rip you apart. If you live in fear, you're in trouble. Don't live in control. So you can't control life. Stop trying to control it. Life has to be fluid. Our concept has to be fluid. You know, in a couple, a week, about a week or so, I'll be 82 years old. I don't want to be 28 again. I don't want to be 30 again. It'd be different if I knew everything I know now and I was 28 again, but it's not going to happen. I don't want to go back to those years, right, Kath? I don't want to go back. But the bottom line is, I have to be able to accept the reality of where I am. How can I move forward? How can I learn? Don't, don't ever be done. God, please. Don't be done. So we're always in process. We're learning. Even the founders of AA, think about this for a minute. When they put the big book together, 12 steps together, they were concerned about a disease called alcoholism. Did you think they thought back then when they put this beautiful steps, this beautiful traditions, the book together? Did you think back then they knew there'd be today, there'd be 21 different 12-step programs based around that same thing they put together back in 1935. It's amazing, isn't it? And yet things change. It can't stay in one way. Even the book itself has four different editions, the process of it. And yet it's so beautiful because in the book, it's a, it's a fluid. It's a concept of suggestions of things we can learn. They tell you, take what you can use, leave the rest learn different things, move in different directions. Everybody's got to find their own journey. But I think the biggest thing we have to learn in life is to relax and go with the flow and realize the fact that we're on a journey. There's a beginning, there's an ending. Got a round trip ticket, don't worry. 
the bottom line is celebrate each moment, celebrate life, celebrate the things that we have. And yet I've learned over the years when I live in fear and I live in control, I'm dead while I'm alive. I don't want to be dead while I'm alive. We have to learn to be the architects of our journey and be open to it. And yet that means I have to be able to embrace who I am, embrace the celebration of myself as a person. Yes, we have traits, we have characteristics. We go through periods of loneliness. We go through isolation. We go through fear. We go through all these types of things. That's all normal. It's part of life. We have to learn how to be able to acknowledge who we are. We have to learn to be able to honor who we are. We have to be able to open up the doors to who we are. That's the beautiful part about this process. And that's what life is supposed to be all about. But I know I have to be able to look at my history and be in love with it, to embrace it and celebrate it. And people even ask me questions. You know, I should have mentioned this earlier, but they say, how come you're a New York Yankee fan? You know, if you look behind me, there's all kinds of Yankee memorabilia and stuff to that effect. And I said, well, the reason why I'm a Yankee fan, because I grew up in the 40s. You got to realize the tie-ins, here we go again, the rules and regulations. Back in the 40s, 80% of the Yankee team was Italian. Therefore, you root for the Italians. So I got used to it, became a normal, what can I tell you? And so now it's still my normal, what can I say? The bottom line is I've learned from it. I realized the fact you look back and you can actually have a little bit of a sense of humor. I know many of us are going through a lot of trauma, a lot of hurt, a lot of pain. We're going through sometimes even insanity and craziness. But somehow, some way, I have to be able to embrace it, learn from it, grow from it, become stronger as a result of it, even though it's not easy. It's all part of the journey we go through in life. And remember, it's that concept, again, to move forward, not to go backwards. I'm learning over and over again the value of letting go of control, the value of opening up and not being afraid. And yet it's scary. You know, it's funny to say, don't be afraid, but it's still scary. It's true. Change is not the easiest thing in the world. Going through transition isn't easy, but it's all part of it. So struggle is part of life. The growth is part of life. Everything in life is this constant process of up and down. You know, it's not this straight line. Remember I told you a long time ago, go to a heart station, hook yourself up and make sure it's going like this, okay? It's going like this, you got a major problem. Life is the exact same way. It's supposed to be fluid, move back and forth. So we go to our history to learn about my traits and my characteristics. I still got a lot of them. I mean, you're a guy who can talk to my wife, she'll tell you all about them. I talk with my hands. If I sat on my hands right now, the lecture would stop. Be totally amazing. You know, because I got to keep moving. What can I tell you? These days are part of, this is part of me. It's part of my makeup. And so as a result, then I have a tendency to have little traits and characteristics, you know. You know, I saw once in a while, I have a tendency, my wife says, you did it again, you know. So basically, I say, okay. But basically, I'm learning over and over again. It's part of my journey. You know, Loretta would tell you, I'm going to say, ah, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You know, sure, go ahead. Whatever you want to do. Keep, and she says, listen, stop You'll give the house away. Oh, well, you know, if they need it, let them take it. What are you going to do? But the bottom line is, it's only a house. It's only a place. It's only material. You have to learn to share, to give, to be open to others. You know, we have to learn our different personalities. We all got different personalities. I mean, God, look at this place right here. All these different personalities, God. You know, we got the maestro. Look at that personality. We got... The crazy lady, Carol, up there, her personality. We got Billy out in Arizona. We have all these different people. We got John. You know, wait, come on. It's all part of who we are. We're all different. Isn't that great? And yet, oh, even how we do, it's all right. <laughs> Basically, we're all, we're all part of this journey. We're all part of life. We have, to be dis- we have to be connected to one another. So we learn from each other. We grow from each other. We grow from situations in life. And what I'm trying to say tonight is, Try to the best of your ability, 
as you do an inventory of your history, try to look something positive from it, learn something positive from it. The only way you're going to learn positive is you're able to embrace it and accept it, even though it might be painful, and then learn from it and grow from it and move forward. I find it so sad sometimes to see people stuck and trapped. They can't move forward. You know, we have to be able to get out of that stuck and out of the mud, got to move forward. And yet sometimes it's not easy. I'm not saying this is easy. Transition and change can be scary. It can be a new thing in the course of life, but it's part of the process we have to go through. And we're going to have setbacks. Got to have setbacks. You know, you got to be able to go back to come forward. A good friend of mine said this to me so many times ago. An old sponsor of mine used to say, good recovery is taking nine steps forward and seven steps backwards. It says you made progress. Progress, not perfection. If you learn that much today, my other sponsor used to say to me, if you learn that much today, that much, I used to get mad at him and say about that. He said, nope, just that much. That's enough. That means you've grown. You're experiencing something new to work in a new direction. And we can get very negative sometimes, get very down on ourselves sometimes, because I wish it was this way, I wish it was that way. Here comes those expectations again. Instead of living in the moment, staying in the moment, celebrating where we are, and being open to the next moment, and being open to new areas of life. So I, I bring out that term, what is normal? Whatever's normal is was ever normal for you today. That normal can change tomorrow. That's why I love that phrase. Yes, Virginia, there is a normal. I go back and look at my history and my past. I can talk about it today, but it's not my normal anymore. You know, I, I look back when I was 18, 19 years old, I had hair. It was wonderful. I don't have hair now. And that's okay, too. Just got a haircut about an hour ago. It's pretty neat. My wife just cut my hair again. Because so we're, 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 we're going away tomorrow to, um, to my grandson's wedding. So I, I had to get a haircut before we go. So I, I got a walk cut, by the way. So it's not a problem. But I love that. You look at life and laugh at life. See where it goes. All I got to do tomorrow morning is get, I, I love it because now, Pat, all I got to do is get a dish rag and go like this. You know, I'm all set. I'm going to be ready for the day. It's fantastic. Wow. Right, Cheryl? That's the easy way of doing it. Not a problem. That's the fun part about life. Joe knows what I'm talking about. Got a little loose up there too, Joe. We're all part of it. Part of the family, right? That's the fun part about it. And yet it's so wonderful to be able to look at things in such a positive way. Try. Even when, you know, there's a good reading that was in the Language of Letting Go book in the past couple of days about acting as if. And I love that. You know, sometimes we just have to make, if it's having a hard time, act as if you're not. And then eventually you get over, you get through it. But don't isolate. We have to be able to stay connected with people because people are where it's at. And I know in my own life, I'm so grateful to all the people I have in my life. I'm grateful to be around people. I was so grateful on Sunday at the party to be able to meet some people. I actually met someone I taught in high school in 1969 when I was a young priest. She actually heard about the party on Facebook and drove from Brigantine to Starting Point just to be there. Isn't that amazing? 1969. There was a guy there I helped get sober 39 years ago. Because I to I'm, he told me the story. He said, don't you remember at your Frey Hospital? You said to me, if you don't get sober this time, you're going to take a baseball bat and smack you across the knees till you start praying. He said, you remember me? You remember you telling me that? I said, yeah, I remember. And I said, the baseball bat's on my office. You better stay sober, I told him. But the bottom line is, all these little things, memories, and stuff that come back to you, things that you do, it's, a, it's what life's about. And so look at your own history. Embrace it. Learn from it. Move forward. And realize the fact that 
Always remember what Iggy told us a long time ago. Remember Iggy from the Philadelphia Bulletin, the comic strip? You got to remember Iggy, the little chubby guy. He used to say, I have met the enemy. The enemy is me. We are the hardest on ourselves. Take a break. And that's why next week, what I want to do, we have to have, we have to work on one thing next week. Codependents take life very, very, very seriously. We have to analyze everything to death. Codependents love to buy books so they can be their own therapist. Take a break. So next week, we're going to work on how to play and how to have fun. So it's fun time next week. So if you've got one, and you want to bring it with you. I hope you have a stuffed animal. We all need stuffed animals. That's the fun part of life. If you have anything at all from your childhood, bring it with you. I'll have some fun next week. We'll also, I'll introduce you to Snoopy next week. And Snoopy to me is the symbol of a free spirit. I love him. My buddy. We get connected with that. So we, need, we take a break from thinking too much and just loosen up, have some fun, do some things differently. I'll give you some assignments next week. You'll have a great time with them. They'll also drive you crazy, but have a great time with them. Have some fun. Okay. So if you have a stuffed animal, bring it, you know, and we'll work on that next week. And then the week after that, we'll go get serious again and talk about codependency and relationships. And then we'll talk about the roles that codependents play. And then finally, we'll get into the recovery process. So my prayer tonight is that we would just take time to embrace our family systems learn from them, grow from them. And remember, your history is your most powerful teacher. Let us pray. God, my higher power, we call upon our own higher power to come to us tonight, to be part of our journey and part of our life. We come here in gratitude for the gratitude of who we are, for the gratitude of our history. Teach us to embrace it, to learn from it, to grow from it, to heal, to forgive, to make peace with it. Realize the fact that as we continue our journey on this earth, to be open to new things and new directions, help us to learn from the past and to move forward into the future, but to live to the best we can each day of our life. We thank you for the gift of our history. Thank you for the gift of our life. We're grateful to be able to look back. But please help us to embrace, to accept, to learn, to adjust, and to move forward. And to be open to all the possibilities of where life can take us. And so as a family, we come together, we say thank you in gratitude for our history. Thank you for who we are. And thank you for who we can be. We pray and we ask this in this guidance. And we pray it in your name. Amen. And now I'm going to ask that you want to unmute and I'm going to turn everything over to the maestro. What you got to do is follow her. Watch, watch her lips as she moves along. That, that, that'll be the bouncing ball, right, Pat? That's right. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. God's will, not mine, be done. <laughs>